The Rigid Coleman Toolbox Monitor is a highly portable black and white monitoring system for C-Snake and mini C-Snake camera systems. The Toolbox Monitor features a high resolution industrial grade monitor with brightness and contrast controls and a video flip switch that rotates the image on the monitor 180 degrees. It also includes a wraparound metal sunshade and a detachable neoprene sunboot to eliminate glare even in direct sunlight. The Toolbox Monitor runs off either its included AC adapter or standard Makita Power Tool batteries. And to help prevent unintentional discharge, an interlock switch automatically shuts off power whenever the monitor is lowered to its stowed position. In the next few minutes, we'll introduce you to the Toolbox Monitor and show you how to operate its controls. After the end of this instructional video, stay tuned for a bonus tips and tricks segment that can help you get more out of your C-Snake or Mini C-Snake camera system. The Toolbox Monitor is fast to set up and easy to use on the job. For battery powered operation, tilt up the monitor and insert a charged battery into the holder. For AC operation, plug the adapter into any AC outlet. Here are a couple of points to remember. First, the Toolbox Monitor may be connected to AC power with or without a battery installed. Secondly, batteries must be recharged with a separate charger the toolbox monitor does not charge batteries. The camera's interconnect cord plugs into the matching connector on the toolbox monitor. Orient the connector so the arrow is facing toward the monitor, push it in fully, and tighten the locking sleeve. The power switch glows steadily when the power is turned on and the unit is receiving a good signal from the camera. If the camera is not plugged in or there is a problem with its connection, the power switch will blink in an SOS pattern. The dimmer transmitter knob adjusts the brightness of the camera's LEDs. When turned counterclockwise until it clicks, it also activates the Mini C-Snake inline transmitter and causes the power switch to blink steadily. Please note that it's completely normal for the picture to become noisy when the Mini transmitter is turned on. To use the sunshade, slide it forward, down, and around. And to reduce glare even further, slide the neoprene sunboot over the sunshade. The video input-output jack is a dual-purpose connector. When the camera reel's interconnect cord is plugged in, the jack provides a video output signal to an external video device like this camcorder. When the interconnect cord is unplugged, the jack becomes a video input for an external video source, so you can play back tapes on its monitor. If you want to record audio along with your video, you can connect a microphone and your video recorder's audio input jack into a small battery-powered amplifier like the Radio Shack model shown here. When the power is on, the battery indicator light provides a visual indication of the battery's condition. When the battery has sufficient charge for proper operation, the light blinks intermittently. When the battery has approximately 10 to 15 minutes worth of charge left on it, the light stays lit. To maintain consistent operation, the battery should be replaced with a charged battery or the unit connected to AC power when the battery becomes low. Battery life is about two hours per charge with NICAD batteries, depending on environmental factors, the battery's age, and the system and accessories you're using. During normal use and transport, the battery can be left installed in the toolbox monitor. For extended storage or shipping, however, the battery should be removed. If you're using a footage counter, try to swap batteries as quickly as possible. If you take more than five seconds to swap batteries, the counter could reset, resulting in inaccurate measurement. Also, if you're using a mini C-Snake with a transmitter installed, Swapping batteries could activate the transmitter, which causes interference lines on the monitor. If this happens, you can deactivate the transmitter by turning the dimmer transmitter knob to its click stop position and back again. To help extend battery life, don't turn up the camera's lighting farther than necessary to obtain a good image. In this pipe, the image looks good with the lights turned up just a little over halfway. Turning them up further doesn't improve the picture, but it will reduce battery life. In the last few minutes, we've introduced you to a toolbox monitor and shown you how to use some of its features and capabilities. But don't hit the stop button yet. Up next is a Sea Snake Tips and Tricks video, a collection of tricks and techniques submitted by users like you that can help you get more out of your Sea Snake or Mini Sea Snake camera system.
Sea Snake Diagnostic Tools are the industry's choice for pipe inspection equipment. The Sea Snake system includes standard and mini camera reels, a choice of monitoring and recording options, and a locating system for pinpointing problems underground. In the next few minutes, we'll show you some tips and tricks that can help you get more out of your Sea Snake system. If you don't have a Sea Snake system yet, call your nearest Rigid Coleman representative to arrange a demonstration. Quite often, two vents will tie in together like you see here. Here's a trick you can use to get into the line that ties in. Loop a length of string through the camera's spring and get it as close to the camera head as possible. By pulling the string as you push the cable, you can get the camera pointed through the tie-in. You'll probably have to turn the cable slightly so the string pulls the camera in the right direction, but with a little finesse, you'll get where you need to go. Once the camera is through the fitting, Make sure to pull the string out of the line to prevent hang-ups. When one line joins another, the shape of the fitting generally guides the camera in the direction of the flow. But in some cases, like where this 3-inch closet vent joins a 4-inch main line, the camera may go straight through the connection and hit the back of the fitting making it difficult or impossible to move forward. To get through a connection like this, try using a smooth quick push to pop the camera through the fitting. Let's look at it again. First, push until the camera hits the back wall of the fitting. Then grab the cable a few inches above the access point, pull it back another foot or so, then push the cable in one smooth quick motion. Notice that the operator is using his front hand to guide the cable to prevent it from folding over and kinking on the edge of the pipe. This technique also works well with the mini sea snake. In this case, with a moderate effort, we were able to push a mini through a combi where a two-inch branch joins a four-inch main line. But the spring folded over on itself and the camera went down the line backwards. To get through a fitting like this, push until the camera hits the back of the fitting, pull it back another foot or so, then use a smooth, quick push to pop the camera through. When the cable is difficult to push, your pushing technique becomes very important. Here the operator is trying to work a mini sea snake through a tight turn in a restricted line, but his hands are too far from the access point and the cable is folding over on itself against the edge of the cleanout. Continuing to push like this could damage the cable, but by simply moving his hands closer to the access point, he's able to get through the turn without damaging the cable. Getting into the line from a removed toilet fixture can sometimes be tricky. The pipe we're entering here is an old cast iron pipe with several years worth of buildup. We're able to make it through the T connection with some difficulty, but there's a combi immediately after. Because there are several tight turns in a short section of pipe, we can't build up enough momentum to pop the camera through with a quick push. As you can see, the camera simply won't go through the fitting from this access point. Here's another place where a piece of string looped through the spring can help get the camera pointed through the fitting. Notice that we're winding the string up through the coils of the spring so it's as close to the camera head as possible. Now that we have the string on, we'll put the camera back into the line and position it so we can see the back of the T. At this point, we're going to run some water in the line to help us determine which way is downstream. Now we'll push the camera into the fitting and pull back on the string to bend the camera head. As you can see, the camera is initially pointed upstream and it takes a bit of effort and finesse with the cable to get the camera turned in the right direction. Notice how careful the operator is being not to over twist or kink the cable which could cause premature failure. Eventually, we get the camera turned and it goes right through the fitting headed downstream. Now that we have the camera through the combi, we'll pull the string off the camera so it doesn't hang up the camera when we pull back out of the line.
There may be times when you need to inspect a branch line from a fixture tee. To use this access point, you must completely remove the trap and elbow. Even with the trap and elbow removed, however, getting the camera through this fitting can still be difficult because of the threaded extension on the tee, the sharpness of the turn, and in this case, because of the large amount of buildup in the line. As you can see here, the camera can enter the fitting, but it can't make the turn. This is another place where a piece of string can be used to bend the spring and help the camera through the turn. Because this line is severely restricted, it's still difficult to push through the turn. But with a little persistence, the camera does get through. Once the camera is through, we'll pull the string out of the line to keep it from hanging up. If you're looking for an underground cleanout to use as an access point, but can't find one, try looking for it from inside the pipe. Here we're entering a 4-inch cleanout next to a toilet. We think the line flows to the right, in the direction of the sink. After just 4 feet, we see a tie-in. Running water verifies that this is the tie-in to the sink and tells us which direction is downstream. The water also tells us where the bottom of the pipe is. Because the camera tends to rotate as it goes through the line, we're going to leave the water running to give us a constant point of reference. At about 60 feet, we see another tie-in. This is about where the second bathroom should be, and we verify this by flushing the toilet. After 28 more feet, we find another tie-in. The two openings in this fitting are about a foot apart, which is what we'd expect to see in a double sweep cleanout. At a distance of 88 feet, we should be outside the building. Our camera has a transmitter, so we'll use a locator to pinpoint the camera's position and depth. If we needed to expose this cleanout, we'd know exactly where to dig. Here's a quick tip that can help improve your view inside the pipe. Try installing one pipe guide on the end of the spring near the camera head. Pushing the cable causes the camera to rock forward on the pipe guide, pointing the camera at the bottom of the pipe. Pulling back on the cable points the camera up, giving you a great view of the top of the pipe. Here's the same double sweep cleanout we just saw. Rocking the camera back on the pipe guide helps us see the fitting even more clearly. Many of the tips and tricks in this video were contributed by Sea Snake users just like you. If you have a favorite Sea Snake tip, trick, or technique, we'd like to hear about it. Please call our toll free automated tip line at 877 TIP PIPE. That's 877 847 7473. If you have sales questions, please contact your local Rigid Coleman representative or call 888 743 4333. You can also visit us on the World Wide Web at seasnake.com. And for information on the complete line of Rigid Coleman products, visit us at rigid.com. On behalf of everyone at Rigid Coleman, thank you for watching.